Hi and welcome. Today we're going to talk about pool chemicals startup and maintenance. Uh, this is for pools 10,000 gallons and up. Uh, the reason for that is the pumps are made for these bigger, more heavy duty chemicals. If your pool is less than 10,000 gallons, I have another video that can help you out in my playlists. Um, also, you, you can still learn a thing or two from this one. So my pool supply store professionals instructed me to buy these six items. I got liquid pool shock, mineral magnet, uh, your tablets, for your chlorine tablets that go in your floater, muriatic acid, which acts as your pH down, test strips, buy the nicest, best ones you can afford, and don't be shy on the amount because on startup you're going to use a bunch of them. And also later on, but you won't need as many after startup. You'll also need a, an algicide. You may possibly need a granular shock as well, but you don't want to do that consistently because it has cyanuric acid in it, and over time you'll hit chlorine lock. So I have since my old videos, I have now switched to liquid chlorine shock, but I did have to buy one packet of the granular on startup because my pool registered at absolutely zero cyanuric acid. For all of this, you have to know how many gallons of water your pool holds. It should say on the box the pool came in, or you're gonna have to measure to find that out. That's what all chemicals are measured off of, is the amount of gallons of water. So here we go. You just filled your pool up with hose water probably, and step one is to test the water. If you're not confident in your set of test strips, you can grab a sample of your pool water and run it down to your local pool supply store. Um, mine is awesome. They for free will test it and they print me out a treatment plan. Really simple. I used to be so intimidated to go in this place, but it actually cost me a lot less money for chemicals. And they help me out anytime I have weird questions. They're super nice. Always consult a professional. You are dealing with chemicals and you should have a healthy amount of respect for that. Just out of safety. All right, so step one is to test your water. Next step is to shock the pool. It's up to you whether you wanna use liquid shock initially or granular shock initially. My pool tested zero cyanuric acid, so I had to do one treatment of granular shock to get my total overall chlorine up enough. Also, my pH and alkalinity was very high and so were my minerals and metals. Now, cyanuric acid acts as kind of a a chemical conditioner slash stabilizer to the best of my knowledge of how I can explain it. Uh, you do need a, a certain amount of it, but you don't want to go over a certain amount because then you will hit chlorine lock and then you'll have to drain your pool. It's the only way out of it. So remember that granular shock contains a small amount of cyanuric acid as does the chlorine tablets. So as your season rolls on, you're going to have your cyanuric acid rise. So it's once you hit the cap on your cyanuric acid, I suggest you switch to using liquid chlorine shock because it does not contain cyanuric acid. Please read all your directions really carefully and be as safe as possible. You don't want any splashback, so you want to pour all of these close to the water so it doesn't splash back on your hand or out of the pool. And you want to walk all the way around the pool to get this circulated as well as possible. You always want to have the pump running when adding these chemicals. And shock run at least 24 hours with no other chemicals and nobody in the pool. All right, so we've tested our water. We've done our pool shock, initial pool shock. We've waited 24 hours. Uh, the next chemical you're going to want to add the day after the shock has had a full 24 hours is going to be your mineral magnet. Now over time, not immediately, but over time, if the scale and things like that stays, high iron stays in your water for too long, eventually it's going to mess up the components in your pump. So you're going to want to get your water nice and cleared of all of that. The initial amount that you use is going to be a larger amount than your weekly or monthly maintenance amount. You do a, a bigger chunk of it initially and then you'll 
it will say on the packaging very clearly per how many gallons and your ppm how to measure where you need to be with it but you're going to use more off the bat than you are on the subsequent uses of it so mineral magnets should last you quite a while that goes hand in hand with algicide typically one bottle will get you through the season this is a small tip, but you can splash pool water on the cement or the surface that you're measuring these chemicals on in case you splatter over the container. Uh, a lot of these will stain, so it's not a bad idea to quickly use pool water to try to rinse it. Okay, so we've tested our hose water on our startup. We have done our shock on day one. We've waited 24 hours. The next day on day two, we've done our mineral remover and run our pump the next day the next chemical you can do is your algicide now algicide is kind of like the mineral of a magnet where you will do a larger amount initially and then you'll just do a maintenance amount that's smaller as time goes on some people do it weekly some people do it monthly it probably depends more on your area and how your pool is testing as time goes on this stuff makes your pool look cloudy for a while as with all of these, always run the filter and the pump when you're adding any of these. My general rule of thumb is minimum six hours per chemical and wait at least six hours between them. Probably should wait more like 24 hours and run the pump as much as you can. No matter what, you wait 24 hours on shock before adding any other chemicals or letting anybody in the pool. That is always number one shock. You wait a full 24 hours. Now, as far as your floater with your chlorine tabs in it, uh, generally you've done your initial shock and that should have brought your chlorine levels way up. And from that point on, it's just kind of playing a maintenance game of staying within the safe range. So you're gonna wanna test and add your tabs accordingly. On startup, it's a good idea to test daily because some of these chemicals can take a day or two to register on your test strips. Now I can't tell you how many you're gonna need. Our pool is 10,000 gallons and typically I run anywhere from three to four tablets. It depends, you're, nobody's gonna have the same rate at which they burn through chlorine. Also the same with the amount of shocking and when needed. Um, it depends, there's too many variables. If it rains, if you have an abnormally larger amount of swimmers than you usually would, uh, the amount of debris that's been setting in your pool because organic material breaks down into bacteria and that's what burns through your chlorine. So the dirtier your pool is, the more money you're going to have to spend on chlorine. So make sure you're vacuuming and brushing the sides of your pool often. Okay, so we have tested, we have done our shock, we've waited 24 hours, we have done our mineral magnet, we've waited 24 hours, we have done our algicide, we have waited 24 hours. We have our chlorine tabs going and our chlorine levels should be looking pretty good. Now it's time to work on the pH and alkalinity. The two go hand in hand. Typically, uh, they'll test about the same along the way as each other. My area has really hard water, so we only have to worry about pH down. And that's what muriatic acid is used for in my area, at least. Uh, this stuff is really gnarly. Please be respectful to this chemical it is caustic most people it's suggested to use gloves goggles mask the whole shebang cover your skin with long sleeves and pants although i see the pool guys out there and they're like shorty shorts dumping <laughs> so i don't know but please use safety and caution with this thing if i stand downwind when i'm adding it i get hit with my nostrils will like burn. So don't breathe this stuff in. Be very, very careful. Do not let it splash on you or anything around you. As you can see, I add a little bit of pool water onto the ground below in case it splattered out. It will stain cement. It will burn your skin. Uh, people typically fill a five gallon bucket with pool water and then pour this into that and then slowly walk around the pool. I'm just not that strong. So I do it this way and I'm very careful and I go very slow. Please have respect for this stuff. Also, just like shock and most chemicals, you don't want it sitting in one spot for very long. 
every chemical the filter and pump is running when you're adding it you leave it running for the full amount of time suggested and also it's wise to brush the pool in a circle to get it dispersing quicker because you really don't want this setting in one spot for too long. Please keep all, don't let people dangle their hands or feet in the pool until this is at a safe level. Please be super careful. Also, storing this stuff, I've heard nightmares of people, they thought they shut the cap really tight and I do it too. I always think I shut the cap really tight. I bought a Rubbermaid container with foam around the lid to really lock it in. And no matter what, every time if I open that lid, I still get almost knocked out by the smell. Like the vapor leak on this stuff is ridiculous. They say it will rust an entire garage full of tools. So please store your chemicals safely at the temperatures suggested. Keep them where kids cannot get to them. That's very important. Now, I suggest that you wait a good 24 hours to test after adding this to make sure your pH and alkalinity has started to go down. Uh, it's possible it might take another treatment. So just repeat as needed and keep testing along the way. At this point, your levels should be getting where they need to be and you should be good for just your maintenance keep up on your pool. Uh, remember, don't be afraid to ask your pool supply store for help at any point. They test the water for free, or mine does at least. They're very kind. Um, they never try to oversell me. It's actually cheaper than going to Walmart and Home Depot because they have a punch card and their prices are super comparable. So I wish I had done that five years ago from the very start, but I'm like a hardcore DIYer. So <laughs> now I've learned just give in and ask the pros. They are there to help, I promise. Appreciate you stopping by and clicking in today. I do hope this helps you out. Uh, please enjoy your pool. Uh, it's a really fun hobby. I hope everybody is not too intimidated to do their own chemicals. It's, uh, it's not as scary as it seems, but do have a healthy amount of respect for these things. We'll see you later.